These charts and images are from government testing of handgun ammunition that happened in 1976. This extensive testing was obviously sparked by the Miami-Dade shootout and the prominent lack of penetration of a certain 9mm round. I have to mention, of course, that this testing was done in 20% ballistics gelatin, so it's kind of difficult to say exactly how deep these rounds would go in 10% ballistics gel. It obviously depends heavily on the round involved, but I'm going to make an educated guess that most of the rounds would penetrate about an inch or more in 10% gel. One more thing. The way they listed the expansion of the rounds, which is actually the presented area, is a little strange, and I think some of the numbers may be a little on the conservative side. I should also mention that some of the rounds I don't have much to say about, because the results are pretty self-explanatory, so I would recommend pausing the video just after you see the charts change so you have enough time to read it thoroughly. I'm going to start off with some of the larger rounds, the first being a 200 grain 44 Magnum Hornady jacketed hollow point. When the bullets expand, they generally have mediocre penetration, unless the impact velocity is about 1250 feet per second. Interestingly, with a heavier 240 grain bullet of the same Hornady design, we see pretty much the same results. It has a bit more penetration across the board, but it only really starts getting deep at roughly 1250 feet per second. We also have a 41 Magnum Hornady jacketed hollow point of 210 grains. With limited expansion at around 900 feet per second, it shows decent penetration. It gets much better though at roughly 1160 feet per second, when it has both good penetration and plenty of expansion. This is the only jacketed soft point I'm going to show, and it's a Winchester 100 grain 9mm round. It has good penetration across the board in exchange for marginal, sometimes inconsistent expansion. At higher speeds, like over 1500 feet per second, the expansion is good, but penetration is quite lacking. I just want to point out that when you have the same caliber and bullet design, it becomes very obvious that the heavier bullets were doing much better than the lighter ones. With a 158 grain 38 Special Winchester round, it was giving good penetration across the board. Almost all of the rounds fired when at least 12 inches. If we look at the 110 grain version of that round, we find that only when the bullet did not expand was it ever capable of reaching 12 inches. Other than that, we were only getting 7 or 8 inches of penetration from the round. With the 9mm 115 grain Smith & Wesson round, as long as the velocity was kept low at around 800 to 1000 feet per second, it will have decent penetration. I want to mention something pretty interesting though. Generally speaking, the more expansion a bullet has, the less penetration it gets because of the far greater surface area. This goes for both rifle and handgun rounds, by the way. I want you to look at the fourth and fifth bolts shown. The highest velocity bullet, the fifth one, has both increased penetration and increased expansion. So it seems that there is a point with some rounds that if you keep adding energy, the penetration will start to go up despite the increased expansion. In other words, the increased momentum keeps defeating the increased resistance. Let's look at a lighter 100 grain bullet in the same Smith & Wesson style, while I mention two more things about this effect. The first being that it can only keep increasing penetration and expansion until the bullet reaches the velocity at which the bullet fails and comes apart. When a bullet breaks like this, its momentum is spread out amongst the fragments, and this greatly reduces the penetration of the round. The second thing I wanted to mention is that this effect may be reduced or basically non-existent with some rounds. This 100 grain bullet had no help of getting deep penetration unless it failed to expand. If it does expand, it may only get up to 9 or 10 inches deep. With the Remington 125 grain 357 Magnum rounds, we see that as the velocity increases to about 380 meters per second, there is a chance that the bullet will come apart. Also, more velocity is decreasing penetration instead of increasing it. With the heavier 158 grain Remington 357 Magnum rounds, we see pretty good penetration, and as velocity increases past a certain point, the energy seems to go directly into increasing damage, and the penetration seems to stay pretty much the same. We also have a fairly light 200 grain 45 ACP spear bullet. And as you can see, we have lots of expansion, but little penetration. The most penetration we got with an expanded projectile is just under 10 inches. 
When we step up to a 225 grain bullet of the same design and caliber, we get more penetration overall. The most penetration we are getting with an expanded projectile is just under 11 inches, which isn't that bad considering this is 20% gelatin. With the 357 Magnum 110 grain spear load, its penetration is fairly low, only 9 inches at most with expanded bullets. And at 1700 feet per second, we see bullet failure and jacket separation. So for both penetration and expansion, its optimal velocity would be about 1400 feet per second. Finally, we have the 9mm 100 grain spear load. With similar impact velocities, these 9mm rounds are having very similar penetration as the last 357 Magnum load. You've probably also noticed that almost all of these 9mm loads have had pretty light bullet weights. Lighter bullets were more popular in the 70s, so that's what the government tested. However, it quickly became clear at this time that heavier jacketed hollow points could have much better penetration which is why for a while the FBI considered a Winchester 147 grain subsonic load to be the only suitable 9mm round for law enforcement use. The original reason why I wanted to do this video was because I wanted to know why Winchester white box jacketed hollow points do well in calibers like 9mm and 40 Smith & Wesson, but generally underpenetrate in calibers like 357 Magnum and 38 Special. I knew back in the 70s it was very common to have underpenetrating jacketed hollow points, so my hypothesis was that Winchester may have been using the same bullet design they had always have for 38 and 357 Magnum, but choosing a more modern design for calibers like 9mm and 40 Smith & Wesson. After all, it wouldn't really make sense for them to recently design a bullet that only works for certain calibers and not others. So I thought if I could prove that today's bullets were performing like the bullets of the 70s, I'd have an answer. Unfortunately, I can't do that with just the knowledge I have now. However, if someone were to chronograph Winchester 110 grain bullets, whether 38 or 357 Magnum, and shoot them into 20% ballistics gel, I'd be able to get an answer. I unfortunately don't have a chronograph, so I can't do that myself. The chronograph part is very important because you need to know the impact velocity. I also didn't go over every round that was tested because that would be just way too much work. This information largely came from a paper that is over 900 pages long. Also, there was a lot of bullets that were tested that did not have any pictures of their expansion.